Hello guys, and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today I am just following up on the underground plants. Uh, before I did one that was for nether plants, uh, thanks to someone else. And this time I tweaked the code a little bit in order to kind of get it to come underground and stuff like that. As you can see here, there's a bunch of um, flowers and stuff that have already um, generated in the caves deep below. It doesn't really matter what kind of biome it's in. Uh, there's some more over here by the looks of it. So there's over here and the more that we kind of travel up and stuff, you'll kind of notice that there's a few random ones. I think there's one right there. Uh, let's see where else there is. There's uh, some over here. Now you might be noticing that it's all on stone. Uh, this is because of the way that it needs to generate. Uh, you could basically place it on any type of block, but because the surface world has more surface area of stone, it's just easier to generate on that particularly. So, um, one thing to note with the script is it will generate at any Y level. Now, I'll probably get out of spectator because it's kind of glitching out a little bit. Uh, we'll go into creative it Just seems to have better rendering for some reason All right, so basically what happens is it's going to be testing for Any air blocks that can't see the Sun the sky so in the in the, some cases you might come across where Some blocks like right here might generate some because technically it can't see the sun right here and because of the blocks right there, right? But for the most part, I've noticed that it will actually generate properly underground for the most part, with the exception of some conditions like this. Uh, for example, I'm not sure why this one actually generated here, but I think it's based on the starting location. It probably started somewhere over here. And then it probably generated and it kind of spread over to this area. Uh, that's my best guess for how it's generated into the sky. Because if we stand right here and look up, you can see that we're, we can actually see the sky where we're looking up for this plant. But my best guess is it's probably generated somewhere in the center, probably that one or somewhere around here. And it's kind of just spread out. But um, it should start in the location where it can't see sunlight which is always going to probably be a cave or under a tree or something like that now if you choose your conditions correctly uh, you could put it on like andersite or something like that then it lowers the chance that it will spawn on the surface but if you want to add it to like grass or whatever then most likely it will spawn under trees as well um, it's really down to the condition that you basically set like in for some cases like this probably would generate some under the trees and stuff like that if the rocks were close enough to the trees like that one example over here where it could have possibly generated but it didn't so uh, again the rarity will be based on how many struck or how many plants you have generate for the same type of plant you can duplicate the plant element and it will generate more obviously in the caves and stuff like that. So yeah, that's um, pretty much uh, the example. Let's go into the script. It's not too complicated. It's just an additional condition. And uh, there was some tweaking of the code. So I'll cover that in just a second. Key plant or the cave flower. Uh, we have a couple different ch changes on this particular page. Uh, again, we have the same properties up here. You can use whatever texture or whatever properties here, but you will want to use a static plant and then you want to enable um, grass for this particular uh, grass or generate generator type. This should help with the generation for generating in caves. If it's set to flower then it might have some problems generating because it's not on the surface. So you might want to set it to grass. Um, bounding boxes, there hasn't been really any changes to that. Properties, the 
only thing to probably take in consideration is to have it um, yeah I don't think there's actually anything particular here that needs to be required everything looks pretty static uh, advanced properties this is where you're going to be setting your blocks for generating the structure on so you again I have a uh, stone andersite granite and diorite as well as a deep slate those are the blocks that I've set for the cave and then for the plant type I've set to cave as well uh, the other properties here should be fine the way that they are if you run into issues just use the same settings uh, for plant frequent flam um, Frequency was it frequency on here? I don't think there is a frequency yet. I think that's on generation But the other properties here should be fine to uh, use as you want uh, Triggers there aren't any triggers, but you can use triggers if you want Generation this is where it gets a little bit more advanced. So the frequency um, I have this all the way up just because it's probably easier to use in a tutorial when it's a higher amount and it just shows the common where they are commonly and stuff like that. Uh, the plant size, this is basically the um, how big the patch is. So I have it 128. It wasn't too big with 128, but then again, it's trying to spawn it all around in the area. So uh, that's to take in consideration. You do want to set the generate plant at any height this is important for making sure that it will spawn in caves so make sure this is checked uh, again if it's a custom dimension that you're using a surface type world then you want to select that particular world here uh, for vanilla world uh, for the surface for caves then you want to basically check the surface uh, thing here now this should also work on the end dimension I should probably mention that now because it will use a very similar method to the cave system you would want to enable the height and set the end and then set your stone under like the end stone or the blocks that you have in the end on this particular property here uh, the other condition that we have right here is basically this procedure uh, which is basically going to use an if statement it's going to use an and statement, a couple of them, and what it's going to do is it's going to test if the current block where it's going to be generating is basically error. So cave error has been basically removed in 1.18, so I don't think cave error is currently working to test in certain caves. For some reason, I don't know why they removed it, but I tried with cave error, it wouldn't generate, that was my issue. Uh, the other issue was, um, well, I couldn't really just spawn it underground because it no cave error. So I had to test for if it couldn't see the sky. So basically what I'm doing is I'm testing if it's not, can location see sky at the current location where it's going to be generating. The other thing that we're testing for is if the block below is rock. Now, depending on your material for your blocks uh, you might want to use a tag or a certain um, different material type uh, for again for example I've basically using all rock materials but if you're going to be using th materials that are mixed with different properties it might be easier to go into your block data and then you want to go ahead and look down to here where it says tag and then you will want to just basically copy that over to here so again this will basically allow you to set your tag for the blocks that you want to basically test for if it's one of the blocks below otherwise if you're just testing for rock or something in a specific category you might just want to use the material type uh, tag which seems to work fine there's different material types rock is for most stones Earth is for dirt, grass I think is also for grass type blocks, it's sort of like dirt, but this is more for dirt, so you would need to use both of these categories. If it's wood, then you would have to use that. I think most ores might be iron, I'm not sure, possibly not. And there's a few other different ones down here, like packed ice and stuff would be under the ice category. 
uh, clays. Uh, I'm not sure what exactly is in clay. I think it's just clay. But there's some other ones in here. You can see on the wiki page for the uh, materials. I think there's an actual wiki page for that that um, explains the material types and stuff. But um, in most cases, uh, if you're doing the vanilla command, like the vanilla one uh, for the cave system, then you can just set it to the rock type. If you're using custom dimensions, then you can probably set your material type for your block to a rock and it would work the exact same way. So then we're just returning true if these conditions are basically met. And if not, then it's false, returning false. Now, I have been said that you can actually just return the condition like this and it should return true or false, but I've always, I've basically learned that you can do it this way and it works fine and I prefer to do it that way even if it's a little bit extra work, but at least I know that I can read it and see how it actually works because then I know that this is going to return true and that's going to return false. It's also easier to do tutorials on so I, other people can learn. But outside of that, uh, that's all the time that I have for today. If you are new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.